This better be important, Beep. I have a lot of work to do in the office today. Beep, slow down. What do you mean? What? Morpheus is in the building. And he's coming to get me. Oh no. Salary man escape review for the PlayStation Fear. Let's begin. First up, let's take a look at the gameplay. This is a puzzle game where you must create a path for a man to reach each level's exit door. To do this you will be moving red blocks. Moving blocks feels very much like playing Jenga. The only difference is that the blocks can only be dragged to the sides and downwards. You can't lift them upwards at all, which does feel unnatural and can also lead you to having small battles with the physics engine to get a block to move to exactly where you want it to. To get a good look at the puzzle, you will need to rotate it. You will be doing this a lot and doing so in a virtual space always feels great in these types of puzzle games as you can really get a good look at the puzzle's layout. Sometimes you will need to know exactly how long a block is before moving it. Luckily, touching a block highlights it through walls so you are never at a disadvantage if a block is overlapping another. You don't have control of a man's movements. He will only run when everything has been lined up correctly, and everything does need to be lined up almost perfectly, which is slightly annoying and can cause confusion in puzzles when you think you have made a clear path for him to cross. Cups serve as the game's checkpoints and they also give you extra time. You can always see how much time you have left as it is displayed on your controller. The best way to approach the puzzles is by lining up the blocks to form a path to the closest checkpoint first, as the man will start moving when the first checkpoint is reachable. The checkpoints are quite handy, as in a lot of the puzzles, one wrong movement of a block can lead to the puzzle becoming unsolvable. The problem with the checkpoint system is that if you get a game over for actions such as the man getting crushed, or if an exit door gets destroyed, it doesn't allow you to bring up the menu to return turn to a checkpoint. Some stages include a coin. Getting to these coins require you to move the blocks in a different position than the route to the exit door. This does make a few of the puzzles feel like two puzzles in one. There is a great incentive to collect these coins too, as they do unlock bonus stages for you to complete. Each of the six chapters in the game introduces a new puzzle element, such as conveyor belts, platforms that spin depending on which side has more weight, blocks that will smash when there's a lot of weight on top of them, some levels have two or more men you have to guide to the exit door. The challenge here is that when the first man enters the exit door, it starts a timer. If the other men don't reach the door in time, it's game over. These puzzles really do require you to look at each puzzle in a whole new way. And there are also levels that have men that you must avoid. The variety here is amazing, and although the chapters all demand you to move blocks, how you approach each one's layout really does change. Once you have completed seven puzzles in a chapter, you can move on to the next. This really is great as some of the puzzles do get quite hard around the fifth or sixth puzzle. Now let's take a look at how immersive this game is. The backgrounds in the menu can be quite blurry, but the text is easily readable. The puzzles in front of you do have a lot of depth though, and are clear. In some of the puzzles, you do feel incredibly small, as you are positioned on a large desk with a computer screen just in front of you. If you look up, you can actually see more computer desks hanging upside down on a ceiling. It does look very surreal, and is very reminiscent of scenes from the movie Inception. Although the simplistic colours do help when solving the puzzles, especially as movable blocks are are in red, the colour scheme does come across as quite dull. It doesn't help matters if you get stuck on a puzzle as frustration kicks in and the whole world around you gives you a sense of hopelessness. There isn't really a main story to tell, but there is some comical writing for each level's description, although the humour here can be a bit hit or miss. The music is very upbeat and often relates to the level's puzzles mechanic. Some of the lyrics are in English and some are not.
I actually found the cheery nature of the songs to get on my nerves, when I was finding a puzzle a bit difficult. The joyous songs certainly clash with the environment's colour scheme. I think a more ambient approach would have been better. Luckily, you can turn the sound off in the options menu, although when the music is muted, you realise there is no sound effects when blocks collide with one another. Even the ice blocks don't have a shatter sound effect, but how they crumble is visually pleasing. Now let's take a look at the setup and what controllers the game supports. I played this game in a seated position just under 2 metres away from the camera. The head tracking was fine and the game did not make me motion sick. Standing really wouldn't bring anything new to the game, as it is easily playable from a seated position thanks to you being able to rotate and resize the level. This game is played with a DualShock controller or one move controller. The other controllers are not supported. When using the DualShock you move the blocks by pointing at them and then use the right analogue stick to move them. It's great if a puzzle requires you to be very precise with your movement of the blocks. However, rotating the level with the DualShock controller is far less fluid, as it requires a few button presses. Overall, both control schemes come with their advantages and disadvantages, but I do think playing with one move controller is the best way to play, as you can physically grab blocks which makes the game more immersive and it is less time consuming when controlling the camera. Now let's take a look at the length of the game and what trophies come with it. There is a total of 78 levels, which consists of 60 basic levels and 18 levels that are unlocked by collecting for coins. Completing every level will take around 7 to 8 hours, depending on your skill level. Trophy hunters will be happy to know that completing everything will reward you with a platinum trophy. In total there are 24 trophies that can be achieved. There is 3 bronze, 14 silver, 6 gold and 1 platinum. Nearly all of the trophies will be unlocked when you have completed every single stage, so you will need to collect all of the coins. The remaining trophies are for doing simple actions such as letting the time limit run out, destroying the escape door and for crushing the man. It is a good trophy list for this type of puzzle game. And now it's time for the verdict. I do think it would have been much better if you was in control of the man's movements, as sometimes you will form a bridge for him to cross and he simply won't move across it, even with a checkpoint in sight. The blocks really do have to be lined up nearly perfectly, which can lead to some confusion. I did find some of the later chapters to be less hard than the previous, but of course, this will come down to each individual player's skills and how quickly they come to terms with the new puzzle elements. For me though, the difficulty was all over the place. Looking back, I do have to say the frustration did outweigh the fun in quite a few puzzles in the first three chapters, which is a real shame, as the game does present some really great ideas in its puzzles designs, and there is a lot of gameplay here for the price. The variety here is great, although the physics engine is a bit strange with some of the puzzle elements. As the game went on, I did get more used to the game's physics engine, and I did start to enjoy solving the puzzles a lot more, but I do think many players may find some of the puzzles at the beginning of the game too much hassle. Oh no! That was a close one. This animated sketch was voted for by you guys. That guy is Will VR came up with the idea and it received the most thumbs up. Great job Will! The whole idea of Jenga-like puzzles is a great fit for VR, I just wish the physics based puzzles were consistently fun through all the 6 chapters. If you found this review helpful please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe for more PlayStation VR content.